Hey everyone, I'm Nick, and this is C++ from Scratch. So in this episode of the series, we're going to be talking about while loops. So in the last video, we looked at the basics of how we use loops in programming. And specifically, we looked at for loops. So these were loops that allowed us to express um, that we wanted to iterate over some range of values. Now we may have specified, you know, the number of iterations or that range using our loop conditions, like with our C style for loop, or we, we may have relied upon, you know, some sort of container, like when we were using a range based for loop with our std array. Now, the problem is, is that we don't always know how many iterations we want to run a loop, right? Uh, the number of iterations may be based on some sort of external input. So we may want to just continue running some piece of code until some condition happens. And the way that we can express that in C and C++ is with these while loops. Um, and there's another flavor of while loop called a do while loop. And these are the two things that we're going to be looking at today. So let's go ahead and get started. And we'll start by, of course, creating a new source file. So we'll create something like while.cpp. And inside of here, we'll create a main function, um, the core of all of our C++ programs. So let's take a little bit of a look at this reference um, from cppreference.com. And I'll go ahead and link these, uh, um, these pages below the video. So like I said, a while loop um, executes a statement repeatedly until some condition becomes false. And the test takes place before each iteration. So basically every single iteration um, or before each iteration, we'll make sure that our condition is still true. If it's true, we'll execute our code. Otherwise, we'll continue past our loop. So let's go ahead and create a simple while loop here. So it of course starts with our while keyword, followed by some parentheses where we'll put the condition that we want to check. So maybe we want to, you know, keep running a loop, you know, while we still have some work items to process. So we'll just create some variable called say work items, and we'll set it equal to some integer like 10. Then inside of our while loop, we may say, you know, I want to run this loop while work items is greater than zero, right? And then I can put these curly brackets and then I can put whatever code I want to inside of these curly brackets, right? And we'll run this code while this condition is true, right? So we'll keep running this code as long as work items is greater than zero. So inside of here, maybe we'll just do kind of a, uh, you know, a, a dummy decrement of our work items to pretend like we're processing some element. So we'll just do something like work items minus equal one, right? So we'll just get rid of one work item every single iteration. Now, just so we have something to look at on the screen, we can go ahead and include say IO stream and print out the number of work items every iteration. So we'll go ahead and use std c out our character output and we'll print out work items then the value, and then say a new line character, right? So everything's on a new line. So this is kind of the basics of how we set up a while loop, right? We use our while keyword, we set some condition that we wanna be true. Um, every iteration will check um, this condition. If it's true, we'll execute the code inside of our body. Otherwise, we'll just skip past our loop. And in this case, we'll just return zero. Okay, so let's go ahead and save this code and then we'll compile it with G++ um, while.cpp and we'll create an executable called while. So there's our executable. We can go ahead and run it and we can see uh, we get kind of what we expect, right? So we start with 10 work items and every iteration we subtract one, right? Until we only have one item left, right? After we process that la last item, right? We do work items minus equals one again, work items become zero, and this condition becomes false. So we stop executing our while loop. Now, like I said, in many cases, when we're using something like a, a, a while loop, um, you know, this, you know, condition right here is going to be based on some external input, right? Um, so for example, we may be querying, you know, you know, some external source for the number of uh, work items that we have, or we may be pulling from some queue to keep grabbing work items. So, you know, while that queue, you know, still has work items, we'll continue this look uh, or this loop, right? But we may not know how many work items we have in advance. Um, likewise, we may just be solving a problem that we can't pre-compute how many iterations that we need to perform, right? 
So we may just need to keep running it until we get to some acceptable solution. So that's where we kind of use while loops. Okay, now, like I said, there's another kind of while loop that we have in C and C++, and that's this thing called a do while loop. Now, a do while loop is very similar to a while loop, except that instead of checking our condition before each iteration, the test takes place after each iteration. So we use this do while loop when we want to, say, always run at least one iteration of our loop. So let's go ahead and uh, quit out of here, and let's create a new source file. So we'll create, say, do while.cpp. We'll go ahead and start by including IO stream because we'll probably want to print some stuff out, and we'll write our main function here. Okay, so let's do a very similar situation here. Um, so let's create, say, uh, you know, some amount of work items that we want to process. Um, and we'll set that equal to say, you know, maybe we'll just initialize it to zero. Maybe we have nothing to process. And then we can write our do while loop. Now, you know, as the name kind of implies, the two keywords that we're going to be using are do and while. So we start out with writing do followed by our code block, right? So we're going to execute some code um, first and then we're going to check our loop condition after. So maybe in this case, we'll just print out, say, the number of work items we have. So we'll do std c out, you know, the number of work items, and then we'll print out the value of work items, and then a new line character, right? And then let's get rid of uh, one work item every single iteration, minus equal one, okay. And then after, right, this code block here, that's when we write our while, right? So like it says here, our test takes place after each iteration. So we'll perform one iteration where we'll, you know, run this code, and then we'll check our condition here. So after um, this code block, we'll write the condition we want to check, and we'll maybe say while work items is, say, greater than zero, right? Maybe we want to check that condition. And that's kind of the basics of our do while loop here. But unlike our while loop, we'll always execute at least one iteration. So in this case, we don't have any work items, but we're still going to print out work items here and subtract one from work items. So we're always going to get at least one print here, even if this condition down here is false, right? Um, because we're always executing a single iteration. So we can go ahead and see that. So if we go ahead and save this, and then we compile, say, uh, do while.cpp and create an executable called do while. Um, okay, so we generate our executable. We can go ahead and run it. And you can see we get a print of work items zero here, right? So we wouldn't have seen that in the while loop case, right? Because we check the condition at the beginning of each iteration. So we would have seen that we don't have any work items and we would have just returned. But with their do while, we always execute at least one iteration of the loop. So, you know, where might you see something like a do while loop? Well, you know, for example, if you're writing some sort of menu, right, or command line interface, you're always going to want to say execute one iteration of a loop that's checking the input from a user, right? So your program starts up, you always want to start out by checking to see if there's a user input, right? before checking to see what that input is, right? So that's where you might want to do while loop. You might want to, you know, get some user input and then check it, right? So that's where you might use something like a do while loop. Okay, so that's gonna go ahead and do it for today. Basics of using these while loops and do while loops. Like I said, I'll link both of these uh, reference docs from cppreference.com uh, below the video. And of course, you can find this in any of my other code at github.com slash coffee before arch. But that's going to go ahead and do it for today. As always, I'm Nick, and I hope you have a nice day.